All right, so in order to mirror one side or the other, the first thing we need is an edge that's kind of dead center of the object. So even if your object was off somewhere off to the side, so long as your pivot is dead at zero, this will still work. So in order to set your pivot first at you know the relative zero plane for the object, you'd select the object, go to object mode, select the object. You'd go to modify, then you'd select center pivots. Just you don't have to do that if your object stayed in the center throughout this tutorial ser series. But if you were modding a piece of geometry and you had it off to the side somewhere and you still wanted to mirror one side or the other, that's the first thing you would need to do is set the pivot to the center. Now we have to create a line going all the way around the object. So I'm going to right click. Uh, well, I guess I could stay in object mode. Insert edge loop tool. Select it. And we're going to go to tool settings here. And of course, we want to do multiple edge loops. And we want to go ahead and set this to a one, just like uh, we did previously. So, and I'm just going to, okay, see, I'll hit control Z. And sometimes you got to come in on the object, like zoom in on it, and make sure you select one of the edges that's going kind of the opposite direction. And it'll put that edge where you want it. So there's our edge going all the way around the object. And now we have to delete all the polys on one side. So I'm going to press W to get out of the insert edge loop tool. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to my faces. Now this would probably be easier to do if I was in probably a front mode. So I'll press space bar. So I'm going to come over here to the front view and I'm going to marquee select everything on one side. So then I'm going to just press the space bar. I'm going to come back over to the perspective view and I'm just going to zoom in on all these to make sure that I got them all. So I missed one here. So I'll hold down shift and select that and some on the bottom here. I want to make sure you get all of the polys on one side of this object. You might miss a couple. So let's just take a second here, zoom into every aspect. Remember we had these really tiny polys up here in the front. So we'll grab those too. And that looks like we got it all. So I'll just go ahead and delete them. So I'll just press delete on deal. You can just do delete or control delete. I'll just hit delete. If you were deleting edges, you'd want to use control delete to get rid of the vertices as well. So now with one side deleted, I'll go ahead and go back to object mode, select the object, come up here to your mesh and you want to come down to mirror geometry. And we're going to hit the select box to make sure we have the right setting for this. So we can already see that the X positive is, you know, looking at it from a front view. And I look down here at my little thing to see which direction that X is pointing. And I can see X positive is towards my right. So I want plus X and I want merge vertices set it and merge with the original. And then we just go ahead and select mirror. And there we have it. It's duplicated on one side to the other. Now, another thing you're going to want to do is you don't need this extra edge here that we just added in unless you wanted to come up here and take advantage of this new edge and maybe kind of bring this down to a point, which I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do so I can get a better effect here at the tip of the blade. So I'll just right click, go to my vertex selection tool, and I'm going to go ahead and select these ones here and hold on shift and select those. Make sure I have four selected by looking up here under my verts. You can always check to see how many I've selected and press W. I'm going to go ahead and just move those down like that. That gives me a nice little angled edge like you'd notice on a sword. And we'll go ahead and get these ones in the middle too. Make sure I have two selected. Just look around here and then I'll just go down on the Y some more. And there we go. Now we have a nice little point coming to our sword here. So it looks a little more realistic. Now let's say we didn't want to mirror it because we've already mirrored it and we just want to add some changes to one side, but we want those to also be affected on the other side. As long as the pivot is centered on the object and both sides of the object are identical, we can use symmetry to mirror any, you know, I can move this vertice and the one next to it would move as well, the identical one on the opposite side. So now what we want to do is we want to come over here and have the tool settings window open. So just go ahead and open up your tool settings window and come down and just scroll down here and you'll see there's symmetry settings right here inside of the move selection tool. So we'll come down and we'll say symmetry is turned off right now, but we want that turned on. So we're going to go ahead and we can either set it to object, which is fine for this because we've centered our pivot with this object. You could also do it with the world. I'm going to go ahead and select object. So it's just doing symmetry with the object. And you notice already as I'm highlighting these, if you look real close, let me deselect and select one. You'll notice that it's selecting on both sides. It's not just selecting on one. So now anything I do to this side, will also be done to the other side. So what do I want to do? I'll go ahead and move those down. In fact, I'll select them on both sides. I'll just select this 
right here. And I'm just showing you how this tool works. You don't have to do this with your model if you don't want to. And I think that looks kind of cool. And then I'll do the same thing over here and just select both sides and go ahead and just move this up and give it a kind of a neat little effect. Now, of course, I could have just done that with a with the scale tool and having selected both the top and the bottom and then scale them down into each other. Or you could do it how I just did it just now. So there we go. This looks like a pretty good sword. You know, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. We could do some more with the handle, but again, this is a game object, so we don't want to add too much detail to this thing. We want to try to keep our poly count as low as possible. So maybe I'll just go ahead and select the edges here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off symmetry. Just remember, if you have symmetry turned on, you always have to come in and turn it off in order to deactivate it. So symmetry works with not just vertices, but it'll also work with pretty much anything that you want to do symmetrically. So you wanted to move the edges symmetrically, you could, or you could also do it with polygons. And I'll just show you that real fast. If I go back to objects, you notice how it's also highlighting the edges. And I can also do that with the faces and come in and you can see that I can select faces on both sides. So it's really convenient to know where your symmetry tool is. Again, this is not really, this does not work very well if your object is not identical on both sides. So just keep that in mind. So now let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just add maybe another edge loop here around this handle, maybe extrude it just a bit and just kind of add like a little effect here to make the handle look just a little nicer. Again, this would be just a simple sword, maybe like a, I guess they'd call them a bastard sword because it has these balls on the side, I think. I'm not sure what kind of sword it is. It's just an imaginary sword. So I'll come up here to the insert edge loop tool and I'll select relative distance from edge so I can decide where it goes. And let's see here, I'm gonna maybe add myself in a ring here of polys and also I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. Because I was just using the insert edge loop tool, I need to get off of it in order to do my extrusion. So I need, I'm going to come up here, I'm just going to use my select tool or you can also just hit Q on your keyboard and I'm going to come to my polygon faces, select all the faces around the handle and I'm going to go ahead and press extrude. Now if I had tried to do it with this insert edge loop tool active, it wouldn't have worked. So just keep that in mind. You have to get off of that tool and then come over and then hit your extrusion. If I try to scale it with the extrude tool, it's not going to react how I want it to. So I'm just going to go ahead and just reselect all the faces. You can just do that right there. And then I'm just going to press R on the keyboard for the actual scale tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale it down the way I want it to go. So there we go. That looks pretty good right there. It looks a lot better than it did, I think. So there we have it. Here's our sword. And that also, this is also a good way if your character's hand is not fitting around the weapon, you can take that those that set of polys and set it up a little bit better. So let's real fast just practice a couple of the tools we just learned by creating a small notch into the sword. So I'm going to come up here to the sword. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go ahead and just go to object mode, select the object, and we'll use our insert edge loop tool. We'll use relative distance from the edge, and we're just going to create like a little notch here just to practice some of those. Like maybe it'll come down, then it'll come over, and then kind of angle down. So I'll need, I already can tell that I'm going to need at least four edges for that. So I'll select one right here, maybe one right here, and perhaps, uh, well, I want one to be perfectly in between these two, so I'll just control Z that. And I'm just going to use multiple edge loops tool too and set that right there so it'll lock right where I want it. Then I'll right click, go ahead and select vertex, and I'll come in. I want to deselect my insert edge loop tool, so I'll press W, and we'll go ahead and we'll move these two inward on both sides. So let's go ahead and use the symmetry tool for that. So I'll come in and I'll select down here at the symmetry. We'll just go ahead and select world, or you can do object, I'll do object, and then I'll select all these vertices on this side. And you'll notice that it selected them on both sides. Then I can just use the arrow and move it in. So you can see that it kind of creates sort of a little notched edge there, right there. And maybe I'll move that down towards the bottom some more. So I'll select all of them and go ahead and just move that down. And that might be a bit too much. So I'll just select these here. Just add a little notch there into the sword. And then I'll go back to object mode. And now we have this neat little looking base there where it kind of 
comes in on the sides using the symmetry tool. All right, so in the next video, we're going to talk about how to deal with edge normals. Because one thing, if you take a look in object mode and deselect the object, if I come over here and I take a look at this ball, you kind of see that there's these hard edges here. And we can actually hand that, handle that by softening these edges. So we're going to take a look at how normals, how normal edges work and where you want to place them prior to doing your UV mapping. So in the next video, that's what we're going to take a look at. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video at brainpoof.com.